Hello, my name is Joe Schmidt, and today we'll be going over the skeletal system. Osteology. Osteology is the study of bones. Did you know that you have about 206 bones in your body? That's quite a lot. Some things you should know. You should know the difference between a bone and a feature, the organization of bones by their location, the classification of bones by their shape, the function of bones, and then the basic structure of bones. Let's talk about the difference between a bone and a feature. Here on the right hand side we have the underside of the skull. Right here would be the occipital bone and right here would be the foramen magnum. Occipital bone is the bone, the foramen magnum is the feature. Here would be the zyg zygomatic bone and here would be the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Right here would be the temporal bone. Here on the right hand side, we have a lateral view of the skull. Here again is the temporal bone, and then this would be the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Also, this is the mastoid process of the temporal bone. Let's look at some more pictures and see if we can clear this up. On the left hand side, we have a picture of a cervical vertebrae. Number one labeled, labeled number one is the spinous process. So if you were to be asked on a quiz what bone this is, you would say the cervical vertebrae. If they asked you what feature number one is, you would say the spinous process. On the right hand side, we have a picture of the scapula. So scapula would be the bone. Number 12 would be a feature, and it would be the acromion process. So again, scapula would be the bone. 12 would be the acromion process or feature. Now let's talk about organization by location. We organize bones in two ways, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton includes the head and the trunk. The skull bones, which are the cranial bones, facial bones, and the hyoid. The thoracic bones, which are the ribs and the sternum. The sternum is actually broken down into three parts. And then the vertebral column. Seven cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, five fused sacral, and then four fused coccyx. The coccyx actually fuses later in life. The appendicular skeleton includes the appendages or the limbs. The pectoral girdle, which includes the scapula and the clavicle. The upper limbs, which includes the humerus, the radius, the ulna, the carpals, the metacarpals, and the phalanges. The pelvic girdle, which includes the right and left os coxae. And then the lower limbs, which includes the femurs, the patella, the tibia, the fibula, the metatarsals, sorry, the tarsals, the metatarsals, and the phalanges. Now let's talk about classification by shape. The four basic shapes are the short bones, long bones, flat bones, and irregular bones. Here we have a picture of the hand. These bones right here, number five, are the carpal bones. They're classified as short bones. Short bones are usually rock or cuboidal in shape. Other examples of short bones would be the patella or the tarsal bones, tarsal bones of the ankle. Here we have the flat bones. On the right hand side we have the sternum, the manubrium, the body, and the xiphoid process. And then on the left hand side we have a rib. Ribs are classified as flat bones. They can be different shapes, flat bones. Another example of a flat bone may be the scapula. Irregular bones come in all different sh shapes and sizes. Here on the left hand side we have the cervical vertebrae, the atlas. On the right hand side we have the left os coxae. Other examples may be other vertebrae or the sphenoid bone. 
sphenoid bone is a skull bone, which is shaped like a bat or a butterfly. Now let's talk about the long bones. Here on the left hand side we have a humerus and on the right hand side we have the phalanges and metacarpals. Other examples of long bones may be the femurs or the toes, the phalanges of the toes. In addition, the clavicle is actually considered a long bone. So the clavicle is actually considered a long bone. Now let's talk about the functions of bones. Number one is the support and protection. The vertebrae helps to support and keep the body upright, while the cranium actually helps to protect the brain. Those are just a few of the examples. The body movement, so body movement, the bones, the joints work together to help, work together with the muscles to enable us to walk, run, and jump. Blood cell formation. So blood cells are made in the ribs and the limbs, in the spongy bone. And then number four is storage of minerals and fats. Bones are the largest supply of calcium in the body. So those are the four basic functions of bones. Support, protection, body movement, blood cell formation, and storage of minerals and fats. Now let's talk about the basic structure of bones. All bones have a similar structure with compact and spongy bone. Spongy bone is located towards the ends of bones and long bones, and the compact bone is located towards the shaft, and this is within long bones. Now if it was a short bone, the, the spongy bone would be located towards the center. So let me say that again. In long bones, spongy bone is located towards the ends of the bone, and compact bone is located on the shaft. Now in short bones, spongy bone is located towards the center of the bone. Red marrow versus yellow marrow. Red marrow makes red blood cells. Kids have more red marrow than adults do. As we age, our red marrow in our long bones turns to yellow marrow. This medullary cavity once held red marrow and actually turns into yellow marrow. The yellow marrow stores energy and fat. So as adults, our red marrow is mainly found in certain areas of the axial skeleton the axial skeleton. So again, red marrow is made within the spongy bone. Okay, and uh, as we age, we lose that red marrow that was located within the medullary cavity and it turns to yellow marrow and stores energy and fat. Now let's talk about the osteon, the basic structural unit of bones. The osteon sort of gives the bone a reinforced structure, like the rings of a tree. They're tubes within tubes within tubes. So this is the an osteon, this is an osteon, and then this is an osteon. So here's a tube, and here's a tube. And then within it is another tube, which is the lamella. And then going the other way, we have the cannuliculi. And then the other structures are the central canal the lacunae, which are the cavities that hold the osteocytes. The osteocytes are the actual bone cells. So this overall structure makes bone tissue quite strong. Another interesting fact is that in the embryonic phase, bone tissue actually starts off as hyaline cartilage. So in the embryonic phase, bone tissue actually starts off as hyaline cartilage. Okay, so things you should know or have gathered from this video. The difference between a bone and a feature. The organization by location, as in the difference between the axial and the appendicular skeleton. The classification of bone by shape, 
as in the short bones, long bones, flat bones, and irregular bones, the function of bones, such as the, their ability to help support and protect, and then the basic structure of bones. Okay, thank you for listening to this video. I hope that you have learned something and continue to advance in your studies.